Hola, ¿cómo están? Bienvenidos a un video más de Sobre Escenarios. Les recuerdo que si no se han suscrito al canal, se suscriban, que compartan el video si les gusta, que me regalen un like. Y bueno, esta es una ocasión muy especial porque tenemos a un gran artista de talla internacional, Víctor Stanislavski. Esta entrevista va a ser en inglés, entonces, este, bueno, pues ya, ya veré para este momento si, si pongo subtítulos, como los de YouTube, pero bueno, ustedes disculparán. Que I'm a little rusty, my English is a little rusty. <laughs> Victor, thank you very much for being here with us in Sobre Escenarios. Um, well, Victor plays the piano and he has played with the most important orchestras in the, in the, in the world. Can you name some of them, please? Uh, one of the most recent uh, was the Korean uh, Broadcasting Orchestra, the KBS, is the national orchestra in Korea, South Korea. Uh -huh. And also I played in Italy and in the United States with orchestras. In Berlin? Uh, no, in Berlin, no. Okay. In the hall. Okay. No, well, and you're very young. I look younger, actually, <laughs> than, than, than I really am. Uh, but, yes. But, but you're very, still young. I feel very young. <laughs> you're still young, I mean, uh, to be so talented and to have had these opportunities. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your beginnings? Where are you from? Well, I was born in the Ukraine, and my family immigrated from there to Israel when I was seven years old. Okay. So I started my first piano lessons there when I was five and a half years old. Why did you begin studying piano? Um, actually, it began from the kindergarten, and we had music lesson, and there was a piano, and the teacher was playing, and I was just... I remember looking at the keyboard and just being fascinated by the, just by the keys, but looking at them go down, and I was just very attracted to that since a very young age. Did you come, uh, I mean, do you come from a musician's family? Actually, not really. My grandmother used to sing and my mother did piano lessons when she was young, but she played for 30 years. So, um, there was no... Uh, actual, uh, an actual background, musical background, or any pressure, it all came from me. So they the didn't see it coming. <laughs> not really. Actually, on the contrary, they, my mother wanted to prevent me even from from uh, studying because she had the bad experience when she was young. And, and, you know, she, her teacher was beating her on the fingers, and she said, there's no way, and, and she quit after a few years, and she said, there's no way my children are going to go through that. Uh, so. In order to begin piano, I had to show even greater signs that I really should be doing music. So they, she understood that, okay, he has to learn. I was coming back from the kindergarten taking a book. We didn't have piano. And I was singing and playing on the table as if, as if it uh, was a piano. Did you draw the, the keyboard or just pretend? There was no keyboard. I was playing on no, the table. But did you, did you draw it? Ah, no, no, it was just uh, like that, just pretending, okay. singing like it was music. So, and, that's so nice. And once uh, they gave me a, a a rifle for birthday, you know, like a toy, and I look at it like, why, why do I need it? And then I get, oh, that. So, <laughs> you played it like yeah, a violin. Like, yes. So, <laughs> it were many. There were many signs that okay, this this guy should be starting lessons. And they were like. Okay, we no we way. give up. Give up no? yeah. <laughs> so. um, let me tell you something. I I have noticed. I I know that in countries like yours, the, the one you were born and the were the one you were raised in, they they give music lessons to children from the a very young age. No, it is like something they do. In um, you mean in Russia? Uh, in Russia and in Israel, and in, yeah. I mean, all the, that side of the world, you know? yeah, it's something it's that we don't have in America that much. Not less, I see. Uh -huh. Well, it is important, it's a good education, even if nothing comes out of it, it's a good base to develop your sensibility and, and sensitivity and, and uh, uh, artistic creativity, uh, and it's, it's good for education. And it's, something comes out of it, even better. And so from a very young age, you decided, you, you, you were like, I am going to, to do this for a living? Actually, also not. It's okay. also interesting because 
many, you know, classical prodigies you see at the age of eight, ten, they play concerts and, and already so much into it and their families are so much into it. Um, I was just enjoying piano lesson. I didn't enjoy practicing. And yes, I did not. And I, I didn't I wasn't practicing so much, only in the piano lessons. Okay. And and still it was okay because probably there was some talent there and and I was just you know doing well without so much practicing, but uh, at a certain um, age I, I felt that I reach, reached some kind of limit. Uh, and, uh, and at that time, it was 16 years old, I went to International Master Class for the first time, and there I practiced, and I saw the sudden, wow, it gives a result when you practice. And I saw, you know, other musicians my age, what they do, and it gave me a lot of motivation and all of a sudden a great feeling of belonging, that music is really what I want to do. It just, just happened in, in one summer. And then it was a path that I was concentrated on ever since to fulfill and, and develop a career in this field, to go to competition, study, and you know, do all the all the all things the that everyone, the process, the natural process that everyone goes through. Um, and the decision was to some, and maybe a bit late, but I don't regret it. Uh, it's, I believe that everyone has his own way and his own fate, and, and just things happen eventually, and it's different between different people. For me, it is funny that he says that he decided that too late because he is still young. <laughs> I yeah. insist. <laughs> so, yes. But uh, um, so you you did your your piano career in Israel. Uh, well, I'm based in Israel. I live there. I studied there my my uh, bachelor and masters with uh, great teachers uh, in Tel Aviv University Music School. It's called the Buchmann Meta Music School. Uh, and uh, very happy that I studied there. Now it, it, becomes, it is becoming a very international school. And many people from abroad wanted to come and study there. Uh, in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. Okay. And now I'm based there, but I travel a lot and, and concertize worldwide. And now I'm uh, on the faculty of that same school where I studied. Okay. So that means that you are teaching now. Yes. Teaching and, and I work also as a collaborative pianist, and so and I combine that with career of concerts and, and piano teaching as well. It must be kind of hard. I mean, Tel Aviv is not very close to anywhere. <laughs> yes, so well, traveling uh, and traveling and teaching and practicing. And well, it is um, rather close to Europe. It's in a matter of three hours. You're in Italy or. Okay. or Know, four hours you're in Paris, so it's much closer from uh, any other places. And unless you go to Mexico or United <laughs> States, and then it's uh, further apart. But, it, but Tel Aviv and Israel in general has a lot of cultural activity. It's really huge in culture uh, relative to how small the country is. So we have many orchestras and many series of chamber music and so many music schools. So uh, it's very vibrant. There's a lot of uh, culture going on, classical opera, orchestras, chamber music. So, uh, Do you think that, um, of course you succeeded quite soon. When was the moment that you were like, okay, this is the first huge step I am taking in my career? Um, let me think. Well, first of all, is the decision to that this is what you want to do. Because my my uh, family had many doctors in the family and many engineers, and uh, all of a sudden I decided that I want to do music, and only that already made me feel very motivated and, and did something. Music is now my world. Uh, and then I guess uh, my, my first uh, um, successful moments were when I won my first prizes. Uh, first, when I was 18 years old and I won a competition to play with an orchestra for its Jubilee year. Uh, so 
was an experience and I had to all the time to come to all of few thousand people that you're a soloist and, and uh, makes you feel good, you know, that you're maybe special in a certain way. Um, and then I went on to win some prizes in international competitions. Um, the most important was in China, actually. Um, and I won uh, the prize in the international China competition. Uh, and uh, little milestones as you go on and you meet new people and, and new musicians and you collaborate with them, uh, play concerts more and more, so it builds up. Do you still feel challenged, like, okay, I have accomplished this, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do more or... Or I still want to do more things? Or... Yeah, you always want to do more things and it is always challenging. And each time you go on stage, uh, it, you feel it. It's never something casual. There's always uh, excitement. And, uh, and of course, you want to develop all the time as a musician, first of all, between you and yourself, to find what you're looking for in, in, in pieces. Um, but also, there's always a motivation to you know, grow up and to, to play as much as you can and you can more important venues and more important people. But eventually, it's not about importance, but about uh, doing what you love. And this is uh, a big gift that mm -hmm. not everyone can say that he really does in life what he has the passion for. And if you can grow, within it and, and, and fulfill yourself more and more. This is always the, the aim. You never give up or never say, okay, this is enough. Because there's no end to the more that you do. That's what's really cool about it. Uh, you say that this is not the first time you visit Mexico. Mm -hmm, that's right. It's the fourth time. Yes, actually, um, yes. Uh, the first time I, I went uh, to Monterrey for an international piano Okay. I didn't win it, but I um, continued until a certain level in the competition. Uh -huh. uh, but nevertheless, it gave me an opportunity to, to visit here the first time and to, to perform uh, in Mexico. And it was uh, a lot of fun. I met uh, some new people. And then uh, my next visits were for fun because my very good friend, my best friend actually, uh, his name is Yochai Weber, mm -hmm. and he is we met in Israel I many years ago, but he lives here in Mexico for the last eight years. So whenever I was on tour in the United States, which is still a bit closer than from Israel, I tried to come and visit. So I visit here twice in Mexico City, and this is my third time visiting. But you're about to come to, to give a concert. Is that right? Uh, yes, hopefully we are um, building the, the platform for, uh, for be able to come here and, and perform in Mexico furthermore. It would be great to have the opportunity to, to, to watch him <laughs> and to listen to him playing. Cuando venga a tocar, de verdad, no, no se lo pierdan. Eh, vamos a poner aquí su website, ahorita decimos sus redes sociales, pero de verdad es un gran artista que ha hecho muchas, muchas cosas. Y, y bueno, he visto algunos de sus videos y es, es maravilloso escucharlo. Do you know any Mexican uh, pianists? Yes, I heard. I don't remember right now the name, but uh, I met, actually not in Mexico, but on other international competitions, we meet many people. And and then I met you, and uh, that that was that was great. And we we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> That's cool. What is the most challenging thing about being a musician? The most challenging thing. The thing that you say, oh, being a pianist is great. However, this part is tough. Yeah. Well, uh, except of of course the technical things that are not of anyone's concerns, but you have to solve. Um, it's, it's the quest for, for the truth in music, I guess. The, the quest for finding the interpretation, finding yourself in, in the piece, and it changes with the time. You can go back to a certain piece of music and you see it a bit differently. And this is the uh, endless challenge, uh, eventually. 
to to bring um, the aesthetics and to combine it with your personality in the best way. Mm -hmm. So you don't give up the aesthetics, but you don't give up your personality and find a way to combine it in the most convincing way. And it doesn't always happen by itself. It's a challenge to find it. That's interesting. And, and I guess you're never happy. You're, you never think that, okay, this is exactly it. It can be almost, but then you feel that could have been even more, but next time. Okay. It's always like that. And, and the moment it will become easy, and you know, that you find everything right away, then there's no uh, inspiration. You don't need inspiration. That's something that can never happen. Has, has there been any surprise for you, like, Okay, when I decided to become a musician, a pianist, I didn't see this coming. This this is a surprise for me. I mean, I didn't expect, I didn't expect to have to deal with this, or I didn't expect these wonderful surprises that I have. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't know if I can point out any something specific, but I guess in any profession, you stumble upon things you don't, you do not expect, or some some challenges and. Yeah, it's tough because it's not that you have an uh, office and you come and you do your hours, come back home, you can watch TV, be with your family and, and you know, your routine. It's much more um, unexpected and changing world. You, you create, you know, uh, your own schedule and, and you try to organize concerts for yourself. So it's not that you know, okay, I, for the next year, maybe the set. Two years I have schedule already, it's an invitation for concerts, but you don't have guarantee for next 10 years that you will have it. And it's something that you have to, uh, and you don't know what pieces you will play, and, and so you, there's a lot of responsibility that falls on yourself with a lot of freedom, which is a great advantage. Uh, so there is challenge of, of finding that way all the time be on your own, and also to be on your own when you're touring, for example. So all those things, I, I wasn't thinking about it when I was 16, I just wanted <laughs> to do music. Yes. Uh, but then, you know, the real life comes and you see that it's it's uh, hard work and it's complicated and there is, and, and you can be hurt by, uh, you know, uh, people that uh, maybe envy you or, or they compete you or some opportunities that are close to you and not because you're not good enough but for other reasons and it happens mm -hmm. and, and, and some people that it can break them mm -hmm. because uh, really few people can really make career uh, today some you some know, people say so that this is a resistance career you know? <laughs> I don't know if it is well said yeah, so many people study music but there's eventually not so much room for everyone, and, and, and yet, not always it's enough to be very good. You have to have some luck, and you have to have some connections, and you have to have doors open for you in this way or another. So uh, it's all challenging, but eventually the fulfillment is so great. And when you go on stage and you play a good concert, and you have the crowd uh, feeling that you reach them tremendously, it's worth everything. What is your favorite uh, piece to, to play? I mean, I, I, I imagine yeah, you have many. I like that question. Can yeah. you always, uh, <laughs> always the, the same answer somehow that you your most favorite is what you do at that moment. Okay, that's great. Because, um, yeah, I can say that I feel maybe more comfortable with playing romantic music. Uh, maybe today, not even. I used to say that maybe when I play Beethoven, I feel very at home, or, or when I play Rachmaninoff, it's in my heart. When I play Bach, it's you know something that is so intellectual, but also so emotional. So every style has its own you know world of what it does to you. Um, but eventually, when you play a certain piece and when you work on certain piece, you because you decided to play it and then you love it and then it, 
becomes your whole world. You get into and, it. And, and then this is your your most favorite because you're trying your best at it. Um, so as long as it's a good piece, good music, good musicians that play with you, uh, you're happy. Doesn't matter if it's Mozart or Rachmaninoff. Okay. Do you play any other instrument? Uh, other than piano, not really. Well, mm -hmm. you play it well enough, so <laughs> you don't really need to play any other. What other music, apart from Mozart, Rachmaninoff, Bach, yeah. what other music did you enjoy? Uh, well, actually, I enjoy versatile styles of music uh, at home. Uh, my partner uh, puts a lot of music all the time and uh, very different uh, and I enjoy it. I usually wouldn't go and listen to music myself other than classical or not even classical because I feel like I have so, so much music going in my head all the time that I don't really need to go and, and listen uh, that much but wow, I like, I like uh, pop music too if it's good and jazz and less fond of you know heavy metal and hard rock that that is less for me mm -hmm. um, but I, I appreciate any kind of music because music is music that is a, a, a great phrase and, and I have heard that phrase from other performers so it's cool okay Victor I don't know if you want to add anything to our uh, Mexican uh, audience just <laughs> to say that Mexico is so much fun and the people are so warm and so great and I can wait to come here as much as possible and also to play for you. So it would be great. I'm looking forward to next times. We are looking forward to it too. And thank you for having me. And, and no, thank, you. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. It is such an honor. Would you give us your uh, social networks to uh, yeah, here? just my name, Viktor Stanislavski. I'm on Facebook. I have a YouTube um, channel with some performances, uh, live and audio. So. And the Instagram? Instagram, I kind of have, but I don't use it. Maybe I should also. I I heard that today this is the most even more than Facebook. So. <laughs> well, so we are going to take a great picture of him and tag him. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you. Gracias a todos eh, nuevamente por estar aquí en un video sobre escenarios. De verdad, busquen, busquen su música, eh, busquen sus eh, performances, perdón, sigo con el chivo en inglés, <risa> busquen sus presentaciones, es un gran pianista. Y bueno, pues lo esperamos muy pronto aquí en México. Y les recuerdo que si no se han suscrito, se suscriban, que compartan este video si les gusta, que me regalen un like y nos vemos en la próxima.